Personal branding is a, is a strange phenomenon. It's a personal brand is what we have already, whether we've consciously thought about it or consciously developed it or not. It's out there already because it's quite simply what people say about you behind your back. And how often do you really think about what people say about you behind your back? How often do you think about the perceptions that other people have of you? Because your personal brand is that collection of powerful and clear ideas that people have about you when they think of you. It's what they say about you when you've left the room. It's the feelings they have about you when you're not there. It's the way they describe you to other people. It's the few words they choose to use when they talk about you and when they recommend you. How do you, re do you really know what people say about you behind your back? If you, if you don't, you're not managing and taking control of your personal brand. And in today's competitive and tough economic climate, we need to make sure that we use every tool that we can to make sure that we stand out from the crowd and make sure that nothing gets in the way of potential sales success. I often like to use the analogy of a pearl in an oyster when it comes to, to personal branding because a pearl in an oyster actually grows organically over a period of time as it gradually evolves. And that's very similar to your personal brand because everything you do every day adds a layer to your brand and it gradually evolves. So every voicemail message you leave, every email you send, every meeting, every presentation, every chat at the coffee machine, every corporate lunch, everything you do every day adds a layer to your personal brand and it gradually grows. But we don't know whether we're actually uh, building positively the personal brand or whether we're weakening and diluting it because often we don't think about the perceptions of others. We don't think about enough what we want to project about ourselves. So often it's, it's left to chance. It's also a little bit like a, a drip of water in a calm mill pond. Everything we do ripples out messages to the outside world, but we're never quite sure how far those messages go and how much dilution there is on the way. So it's quite clear, our personal brand is there already. We've just got to take control of it and manage the perceptions so that it becomes a powerful and fundamental business tool for us. Now the key thing about personal branding is that it's not about image. It's not about just having a great image and projecting that. There are thousands of image consultants out there who will work with you to give you a great image. And that's important. But it's not just as far as we go. We need to go much deeper than that if it's going to have the impact and sustainability that we need it to have in business today. So think about an iceberg for a moment. It's an analogy we often see used in business, but it's perfect for the walking tool methodology of personal branding that I've developed over the last 12 years. Often the bit on the surface is the bit that people see and the piece that people judge us on. But underneath the surface is the huge core authentic you that often people don't get to see. It's your values, your motivators, your drivers, your beliefs, your standards, your strengths, your talents. The things that people often don't get to know if you don't project yourself well and consistently. So what personal branding is about is getting to the depths of the iceberg to really clarify for yourself to start with what you really stand for, what your authentic core is, and then looking at the tip of the iceberg to make sure you package that in a way that projects your brand authentically. So I talk an awful lot about authenticity when I talk about personal branding. And authenticity is at the core of the methodology that I've developed. It really isn't about being superficial or artificial in any way. And I find in business today, authenticity is absolutely fundamental to success, to building trust, to building likability. We all know that old cliche that people buy people. So very quickly, you need to make sure people buy into you. And one of the most powerful ways to do that is with an authentic personal brand. The second big stride that I talk about with Walking Tall is the powerful first impression. Now, we all know that we make an impression very quickly because it's a cliche. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. And actually, it happens within five to seven seconds. How much emphasis do you put on the first impression that you make? Because in business, I find that people focus very much on their content of what they're going to say and deliver, whatever form that takes, and very little time in, in terms of thought, in terms of the first impression that they're going to make non-verbally. Now, what we do on a first impression is when we meet somebody for the first time, we first of all take in the non-verbal communication. 
So this will be the body indicators or body language and dress and appearance. And then as soon as, as soon as somebody starts to speak, we don't so much take in what they say at that stage, but actually how they say it, the quality of the voice. And if we like what we see and how we hear it, then we'll hook into the content much more quickly and effectively. Now, it's not about image being more important than the, the content. It's certainly not that. And some people will tell you image is everything. I absolutely don't agree with that. Image is important, but we have to have the substance with it. But without a great first Im impression, people may not even get to our content, may not even get to the substance, particularly in an interview situation or particularly in a first sales meeting situation. So we need to think about the first thing people take in is the non-verbal, so it's what we see and then how we hear it and then what we say. And we'll hook into the credibility of that person much more if we like what we see and how we hear it. Now, it has been said it can take around 20 further experiences with somebody to change a first impression. Now, that sounds an awful lot, but when you think about it, you do get hung up on that first impression. You keep coming back to that time when you first met that person. And you might say to yourself, oh, he's a bit more professional than he was on Monday morning when I met him, or she's a bit more friendly than she was when I last met her. But, and we keep coming back to that but, we, it takes an awful lot for us to change that first impression. So 20 sounds a lot, but actually it's, it's probably very accurate. This was research done by the Professional Image, Image Institute in the US, and they, they showed that it took around 20, 21 experiences. The first seven seconds then is incredibly powerful. We need to think about how we come across non-verbally as well as what we're going to, to say. And one thing I want to mention here, because it is something very important that often people don't pay enough attention to, and that's the way you dress, your dress and appearance. That's taken in incredibly quickly on a first impression, within five to seven seconds, as I said. So how does your dress and your wardrobe reflect you and your personality? Does it get in the way of your true qualities and abilities? Or does it really reinforce and is congruent with what you're saying you say you can do? Because whether we like it or not, people do judge us on the way that we're dressed. It's not fair, but that's life, and that's how we do judge people non-verbally to start with. We feel that we get something about that person's values, their standards, their levels of respect, their, their ability to do the job even by the way that they, they dress. We decide whether we want to work with somebody or build that relationship or buy from somebody, and it's influenced by the way that the person appears and the way they dress. Fashion critic James Laver once said, clothing is the furniture of the mind made visible. Now, whether we agree with that or not, it's probably true. We get something about that person from the way they dress. Now, the, the thing with dress is that it, I'm not one of these image consultants who will tell you what you have to wear because that's right for your colour and right for your body shape, and that's it. Whether you like it or not, that's what you've got to wear. I think we, that becomes very restrictive and prescriptive as well. So we need to think about our personality, but if I can give you some guidelines to think about that apply generally, but particularly to the first impression, these would be some of my key things. First of all, does your, your dress reflect your personality? Does it say what you want it to say about you in a professional sense as well? What about when you do dress down, when you do business casual, smart casual? And people often say to me, what, is, what does smart casual mean? I don't know the difference between smart casual and business casual. Is there a difference? If there is, what is the difference? It really is that there are no the rules for this. I feel there are important guidelines. And first of all, with smart casual, you need to think about, does it compromise my professional credibility? Does it compromise my personal brand? And actually apply the same criteria to your business casual wardrobe as you would to your smartest and sharpest suit look. Does it fit well? Is it well maintained? Is it up to date? Does it look like it's been washed a hundred times so it's lost its shape and colour? Are there any marks or stains on it that need to be uh, removed? We would pay that attention to our sharpest suit look, so apply that to your business casual look. Good fit is a really important element. I find in business life, in all market sectors, bad fit is quite prominent and it will always let your impact down, your personal brand down. Never compromise on good fit. I see trousers that are too long, too short, sleeves too long, too short, jackets that are too wide on the shoulders, all sorts of things. Jackets that look, don't look like they will do up. Just make sure that you pay attention to good fit. 
and shoes, whether we like it or not, pe evidence shows us, research shows us that people notice people's shoes and they'll judge you on your shoes. And one last element, think about your grooming, facial hair, skin care, hair, nails, makeup for women. These things are, are in our mind, we know they're important or maybe we don't think about them enough, but actually they are very powerful in creating that positive first impression. Mm -hmm.